Hey guys welcome back to the channel and this video is all about updates in nuclear tech mod. Now some of these updates are pretty game changing like the conveyor belt which introduces the mods first working item transportation or the automatic crafting table and the assembly factory. Now the other updates are more functional like the rbmk upgrade or the gas flare and finally some of them are purely aesthetic but I am going to cover them nonetheless. Now you might know some of them you might not but I am pretty sure you will learn something from this video. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's start with everyone's favorite which is the RBMK reactor. There are two new blocks called the RBMK fluid heater and the heat exchanger. For my setup here, I have a moderated fuel rod surrounded by two reflectors and one RBMK cooler in order to control the temperature of the entire reactor. Now the RBMK fluid heater is like any other RBMK column, it looks something like this and it also has an internal GUI. So right now it will accept coolant and it will be processed into hot coolant. Now instead of using coolant you can also use mugroot beer but I prefer using coolant cause it can be produced easily and in indefinite amounts. Now also by using this you will also need to use the RBMK heat exchanger in order to input the coolant and get the hot coolant out. So connect the coolant pipes like this and with this the fluid heater will be full of coolant and now we need to get the hot coolant out of here so get a pipe from the top and loop it back inside into the heat exchanger. So now we have a loop of coolant going in and hot coolant coming out back into the heat exchanger. Pretty cool. Now in order to make steam itself we are going to need to put some water in the heat exchanger so connect some water pipes. And for the output, connect super dense steam pipes. This setup can only produce super dense steam. No other type of steam can be produced. So now that the entire setup is done, we are going to test it. And I'm going to use medium and rich uranium for this purpose. So now all we need to do is wait for the temperature to hit 600 degrees Celsius. Now, as you can see, the heat is quickly rising. And as soon as the temperature hits 600 degrees Celsius, all of the coolant will start getting converted into hot coolant. Now this conversion will also transfer heat to the water and water will be converted into super dense steam which can be seen from the RBMK heat exchanger here. So right now all of the super dense steam is being stored in this tank here. Now once the conversion is complete, basically all of the coolant has been converted into hot coolant, this will form an infinite cycle of Basically the loop that I explained to you before, coolant will be converted into hot coolant and using that water will be converted into steam. So you don't need to input any further coolant into this setup right now. Now I am using the cooler to cool down the entire setup. You can use a different mean if you want to. The second machine on our list is the assembly factory. Now the assembly factory is kind of like the chemical factory and it can be made in an assembly machine using the following items. The entire list is right here. And by no means is this a cheap recipe, but in the end, it is definitely worth it. Now, if you take a look on the sides of the assembly factory, you can see that it has fluid input ports and item input and output ports on all of the four sides. So that's for the exterior of the machine. Now let's take a look on the internal GUI. So using the assembly factory, we can make or we can process eight recipes at the same time. And these are the output slots. Now for the energy buffer, we have an internal buffer of 10 million HE and it also requires water in order to function. This water will be converted into low pressure steam. Now there are also four upgrade slots for speed and power saving. So let's test this entire thing out, right? So for our first recipe, we are going to go with the superconducting magnet. And for the second recipe, we are going to use the control rods. Now I am placing these in the first and the third slot. Now if we just place the required materials, you will see that the first recipe will start processing and the machine will have a very cool animation like this. And here we have or basically produced a superconducting magnet. Let's do the same for three, place in all of the items and that will start making the control rods. Now all of these items will be stored inside the factory as long as it doesn't have an output. Now for the output you can use any storage inventory I am going to use a crate and all of the output items will be directly 
or output it into it. And same goes for the input. If I placed all of the raw materials in the input crate, the machine would accept them. Now you can connect the fluid pipes in order to input water and also output the low pressure steam. As I am in creative, I am going to use an infinite barrel but you will need to use the cooling tower in order to do something about the low pressure steam. Now third up on our inventory or the list is the conveyor belt. Now conveyor belts can be made using multiple recipes and they will give you different quantities of belts with rubber giving you the most amount of belts which is 64 or an entire stack. Now some basics about belt. They will be placed in the direction in which you are facing. And as for going up, the normal conveyor belts can travel up. They will only go in a horizontal direction. Now belts can go into each other. So for example, if you want to change the direction of an item, you can do that by making a belt go into the other belt. So right now, this item will continuously loop around on this conveyor setup. Now another cool thing is that the item will be rendered, but it will have no collision. So you can stand on the belt and the item will pass right through you. Another thing is that the belt won't push you around. So you can actually have an entire factory setup and roam around without having to worry about picking up items even if you didn't want to. Then there are two other type of belts which is the double lane conveyor belt. They can basically convey or have two different type of items travel at the same time. And then there is the triple lane conveyor belt which can have three different type of items traveling at the same time or three items traveling in different lane at the same time. Next up we have the conveyor inserters and the extractors. Now the inserter will insert any item into a storage inventory which is placed directly in front of it. So if I drop an item on the conveyor belt right now it will be deposited into the crate. Now the inserter also has its own input inventory or basically a small buffer of inventory for when the crate is full. Now the extractor or the conveyor ejector it is a bit more complicated as it has white list and black list. So the conveyor extractor won't eject any item as long as it is not white listed. So right now in the crate I have an iron crate but it won't be ejected. But as soon as I white list this item it will be ejected. So that is how this works and if an item is not whitelisted it won't be ejected. For the upgrades we have the stack ejection upgrade which will allow us to extract an entire stack at the same time. So right now as I have placed an entire stack in here you will see that whole stack will be ejected and then there is the speed upgrade. Next up we have the conveyor shoots which will allow for uninterrupted transmission of items you won't be able to hinder it and then we have the vertical conveyor belts which will allow you to basically make your items travel upwards and also do remember that the conveyor inserters and the conveyor ejector can be redstone control so yeah they do accept redstone input and output so that's that Now work on conveyor belts is being done, I will make a separate video on it once it is complete. Next up we have the flare stack which is the reworked version of the gas flare. Now the flare stack can not only burn natural gas but also other liquids and gases. Now it can also vent gases but it can also burn them, basically the flammable ones. And there is a different efficiency for liquids and gases. So yeah, the flash tech is pretty useful now. So for the liquid example, let's take kerosene. I'm going to get two barrels of kerosene in there and you start the flow valve and then basically turn on the ignition. And as soon as you do that, the flash tech will start producing power. That too at a pretty decent rate. For the gas, I'm going to use biogas and biogas will also burn and it will also produce power the same way as any liquid work. Now what has not changed is when this thing is burning, standing on top of it won't do you any good. So yeah, do remember that. And if you have a gas that you are not going to use, you can simply vent it into the air. Even if it is not flammable, this flare can just vent it out. All right, 
Next up is a pretty useful item which is the automatic crafting table. Now this can accept input from the top and output from the bottom. Now for the recipe you can select any recipe that you would use in a crafting table. As I am in a desert biome I am going to use the recipe for sandstone. So 4 pieces of sand will give you 1 piece of sandstone. Power the automatic crafting table up and just fill the input plate with sand blocks and the table will start doing its work. So right now sand blocks are being transferred and they are being converted into sandstone and being deposited into the bottom crate. Now for two upgrades which are more of a visual upgrade. We, first of all we have the turbo fan. Now the turbo fan works the same way as it used to before but it looks way cooler when it does. So having kerosene in there will produce power. But now you will be able to see much more moving parts compared to before. And the design overall is pretty good. The upgrades that it can accept are the same that it used to accept which is the afterburner upgrade and it will still burn you if you directly stand behind it. And for the final item on our list we have the pump jack. Now the pump jack has been completely reworked visually that is. It looks way cooler than it used to and even the internal GUI has changed. So we have the inner buffer for power, there is the crude oil and natural gas and for the updates it can accept the speed, power and the uh, what do you call it the afterburn upgrade. So it can produce its own power and power itself by burning natural gas. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Peace out my guys. Stay safe.